this video, we're going to be covering how to build a navigation molecule. Now, the navigation molecule will be made up of several smaller atoms, which will be links to pages. And so we will first build the atom and then move on to building the molecule itself. So to get started with our navigation molecule, we're first going to create our link atom. So in our atoms directory, we'll create a new folder called link. And we'll go ahead and copy the storybook um, button knob file and story.js file and bring them into link. And then we'll rename these link.knobs.json and get rid of the icon information. And in our button file, we'll rename this to link.story.js and we'll remove the import. We'll remove the select and we'll remove the icon. And then we can go ahead and remove most of this uh, information or code and remove a reference to a component as we're just going to be using a standard anchor tag instead of a, a React component. And we'll call this basic link and the title link. So now what we're doing is we're creating a new link story, which is still using the knobs add on, but we're just creating an anchor tag, which has some inner text and we'll create a href to a hash key and then exporting it as link. So now if we go ahead and run storybook, we should see that even though we haven't created a custom react component, we are still able to register a custom story for a standard HTML anchor element. Now, the reason we're creating a story for a basic HTML anchor element is because we still want to document this component um, in our system as it is an atom within our system. And we might want to style it differently with our base CSS or global styles and still document it within our pattern library. So now it's in a new group called link with basic link. And if we go over to our sidebar, we have access to knobs, which allows us to change the link text to anchor here. And you can see it is updating as we would expect. Now the docs doesn't really have too much because this isn't a advanced React component. It's just a basic HTML element, um, but we still want it in our system. So now that we have our link, we're going to go ahead and create our next stage of atomic design, which is molecules. So to do that, we're going to go into our components directory and create a new directory called molecules. And we're going to create a new directory in there called navigation. And then we're going to bring over the same files that we had for our button component into our navigation and update the names to navigation. Now, if Storybook's throwing up a ton of errors, um, the best way to get around this for now is just to close it and clear my console. And we're going to start writing our React component. So because we've got a ton of information already from our previous button component, we can go ahead and start removing most of this. Um, we're going to add in styled navigation, which will be a styled component once we finish the video. And we only want to return one example of our style navigation for now. And we can do so by immediately returning. We won't have an icon. We won't have an on click variant. Now we'll get rid of that as well. Children. So what we want is we want two props. We want one is direction and one is items. And we will pass direction into our start component. And then we will go over the items. And for each item, we will return an anchor with the item.url value. And then item.title. So items will be an array. And each array item will be an object with an expected key of title and URL. And so in our prop types, we can go ahead and say direction will be a string, which is required. 
and we'll have items, which will be an array of, and then shape. And we will have two keys. One is title, which is going to be a string, which is required. And one is going to be a URL, which is string, which is required. And those will be our prop types. So with array of, we can specify there's going to be an array of an object with the shape of title and URL. So basically we're saying an array with objects. And then for our default props, we're going to have direction will be horizontal. And then items will be equal to an empty array. So we won't get any errors when trying to map over the um, prop value if we don't pass in any value. And we can go ahead and get rid of this button icon bit down here. And then update references to button to be navigation. Next, we have our knobs file. So as said, we had direction and items. So we can set these as knobs. And we can set up some default values. So we have direction, which is going to be horizontal by default as a knob control. We could set this up as a select actually. So if we go over to our Sorbic knobs and copy over options. We can set up the options to be horizontal and vertical and then get rid of the other ones. And then in our navigation stories, we'll need to update this to use our new values. So there's going to be two variations of our component. And those are going to be using direction items, knob data is coming from navigation button knobs. We're importing navigation from navigation. And then update references to button. And then we're going to be passing in direction is equal to direction, but this is going to be a select. So we'll have select direction dot label direction dot options direction dot default. And then finally direction dot group. It's quite a lot. And then for our items, we'll do something very similar where we'll have an array. So that needs to be imported from prop types. Uh, not from prop types, that needs to be imported from knobs. And we're going to use very similar values, but we're going to change these two items and get rid of options. And we can go ahead and copy this to be so horizontal navigation, horizontal, yes, and then vertical. And we can go ahead and change the direction default to be vertical. And that looks good to me. We don't need text anymore. And then finally, navigation styles, we can go ahead and get rid of most of this just because we don't want to style it yet. Styled navigation is going to be a styled nav. And we'll just leave some padding on it for now and get rid of the rest. So now if we go ahead and run storybook, we might have one or two errors because we did just add in a ton of new configuration for our styled navigation and the navigation story and custom react component. So now if everything went well, you'll see we've got this new navigation and vertical navigation with knobs, which allow us to control the direction, which by default is horizontal, but you can change it to vertical. 
And we also have access to an array of objects, which isn't really coming out too well. Um, but we can do some advanced configuration later to implement a better, you know, a better implementation of the prop values. But for now, we're going to focus on the navigation. But before we get started on actually um, styling the navigation and controlling it a bit more, you know, better, we first want to examine our storybook hierarchy. Because as you can see, although our button and link were fine to be grouped separately, it becomes a bit more complicated when we have navigation now because these aren't being grouped by their atomic uh, levels, they're being just grouped by their directory name. Now, fortunately, Storybook has a way to implement your own hierarchy system, and we're going to go ahead and do that now. So in our stories file for navigation, just before our title name, we can put in molecules and then um, a, vert a vertical line. I'm not sure um, what the name of that character is, but as you can see now, there's others which has button and link, and then Molecules, which has navigation. So by putting a name in front of the title and then a character break, whatever you would call that character, um, we can group our atomic um, structures by their atomic level. So we can go ahead and go into our button stories and add in atoms in front of button and do the same for link. And now you can see that when we return to our storybook environment, we have buttons grouped together and molecules grouped together, which helps differentiate the different um, levels of our components. So revisiting our navigation, we have horizontal and vertical, although there's not much difference right now. Um, we're gonna start styling that and adding more items to show a visual difference. So we're going to add in some more items in our default array value. And we'll just call them about us and have a contact. And then you could update these if you wanted to, although they are not actually going to navigate anywhere, so it doesn't matter too much. So now when we refresh, we have home, about us, contact, and the same for our vertical but it's not looking too great. So let's add some styles. So we'll display this flex and we are returning an anchor item. So we'll do A plus A, margin left is eight pixels. So now we've got some spacing. Let's, let's crank that up to 24, just, just for now. Cool. And then what we can do is we could do because we're display flex by default, flex direction is row, which means it's going to go horizontal. But what we can do is we could do flex direction and then access our props and then say props dot direction doesn't equal horizontal and then use a ternary operator, which says, so if this um, sort of if statement is true, then return flex direction column. Else we could return undefined or we could return row. In this case, we're going to return undefined, which means that this CSS property doesn't get like set if um, we are horizontal. So by default, it'll just ignore this. So if we refresh, what we should see now is that when we have the vertical direction being passed in, we are starting to stack them but the margin left is still being applied. So we can go ahead and use this same um, operator, but instead we're going to use margin top. And we're going to say, if it isn't horizontal, then put 24 pixels. If it is horizontal, ignore this. And then we can copy that and do the inverse by saying, if it is equal to horizontal, give me margin left 24, if not ignore. So now we've got stacking or going to the side. So we now have a reusable navigation list molecule that we're gonna be bringing into our larger structures in the following videos. So in the next video, we're gonna be covering how to build a footer organism, where we'll be using several navigation lists to structure our component.